Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and I'm going to take you on a tour of the Service Registry dashboard. During this demo I'll take you through the features that allow you to configure, customise and administer the dashboard to suit the various roles that might exist in your organisation. Let's start by logging in. You are now looking at the business view. This is one of the default views that is included with WSRR when it's first installed. You can think of a view as being very much the same as a space that you may be familiar with if you've ever used business space in the earlier versions of WSRR. It contains a number of pages and those pages contain one or more widgets which allow you to interact with the contents of your service registry. Let's start by showing you some of the menus in the banner that is always present at the top of the dashboard. First we have the view menu. At the moment this is showing the currently selected view which is the business view and if I open it up you can see the other four views that are included with WSRR by default. Moving along we have the user menu. This is currently showing the user I am logged in as and if I open it up will allow me to log that user out. Next along we have the configure menu. This contains most of the functionality that allows you to administer the dashboard and I'll cover those in more detail later. The final menu is the help menu. Uh, this contains a link to the help center and also will allow you to open the about box uh, which contains version information etc. Moving down we have the tabs that allow you to switch between the pages in the view and right at the end of those tabs we have the create page icon that will allow you to create a new empty tab that you can then add widgets to. Now you can customize and configure the default views as much as you like but let's show you how to create a new one and the options you have for doing that. So we'll start by going up to the configure menu in the banner opening that and selecting Manage Views from the menu that appears. Here you can see a list of all the views that exist in the dashboard. At this stage that's just the default views that we've already discussed. So let's go and create a new view by selecting the Create View button. Now the first thing we need to do is give our view a name, so let's do that now. We can also give it a description but I'll choose not to do that at this stage. There's also the option to change the icon that represents the view in the Manage Views display or also in the View menu, but I'm not going to change that now either. So let's just move on to talk about the three options you have here for creating your view. These options dictate where you start from when you're creating your new view. So if you wanted to start from a default position you would choose to create the view based upon a template and there are a number of templates provided with the dashboard so if you wanted to start say with the defaults for a development view you would select the development template and that would give you a view that starts with all the default pages and widgets that you would find in the default development view. Now if you had for example customized your development view and you wanted to start from that customized version of the development view then you could duplicate the development view instead by selecting it here. Uh, this option will let you duplicate any existing view so if you had created your own entirely custom view and just had a few changes that you wanted to make in another view based upon that then you could duplicate that and work from there. The final option is to create a blank view and this really is starting from scratch. It would give you uh, an empty view with no pages and no widgets and you need to create everything from the ground up. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to hit the create view button and that will now make the new view in the system with the name I've given it there. And you can see we get a message confirming that's happened successfully, which I'll close and we can now switch to that new view by selecting it from the list of views. So here is the new empty view 
and I can now move on to showing you how you would create pages in this view and adding widgets to those pages. Let's start by creating the first page. We must give the page a name. And you can see here that there's another option that I could have chosen to duplicate a page. Now if you had one of the default views where you already have some pages, you could create your new page based on one of those by duplicating it. But we're not going to do that here, we're just going to create an empty page and add some widgets to it. So I'll hit the Create Page button, and here's our new first page. We are now in Edit Page mode. This means that I can change the page name and also change the layout and add widgets to the page. So that's what we want to do, so let's select the Add Widgets link here. This will open the Add Widgets dialog, which lists all of the widgets that the system currently knows about. I'm going to choose to add a collection widget to the page, so let's scroll down and select the Add button under the collection widget. I also want to add a search widget, so let's scroll down a little further, find a search widget, and add that to the page. Here we have our search widget, so I'll click Add, and that is also added to the page. I don't think I want to add any more widgets at this stage, so I'm going to select the Done button. You can see now my new page has the collection widget and below it the search widget. I'm not entirely happy with the layout of that page though as it stands, so let's show you how to change the layout of those widgets in the page. To do that we move to the Page Layout menu. Let's open that up and you can see we have a number of options. At the moment we have the one column layout which means that everything appears in a single column, one widget above the other. I'd like to change this to a two column T. Let's select that and I'll show you what that looks like. Hopefully you can see that there are some dotted outlines that indicate where the widgets can now be placed upon the page. You can see my collection widget is there on the left and below it is the search widget. I'd like my search widget to appear along the entire width of the page at the top and I can do that simply by dragging it using the title bar up to the dotted area at the top of the page. This is the top of my T, if you like, in my two column T layout. Now I'm fairly happy with that, but I think I'd like to make the collection widget a little wider. So you can simply take the edge of the widget and drag it to make it bigger. You can also change the height of it, so if you'd like this collection widget to show a few more items, you can grab the bottom and simply drag it down. When you're happy with the layout, you simply select the Finish button and that will then save the changes to the page and give you a message to confirm that to you. So here's our new page with the two widgets we've added in the layout that I've gone with. Uh, but what if I want to add some more widgets, maybe some custom widgets? I'll show you how to do that now. Custom widgets must be imported within zip files that are treated as custom widget archives. So let me show you how you would import that file so that you can put your custom widgets onto a page. You start by heading up to the configure menu and selecting manage custom widgets. Now at the moment I don't have any custom widget archives in my system but I'm going to import a sample zip file that contains a sample custom widget so I can show how that's added to the page. Let's find the zip file on my file system, select it and import it. And there we have a message confirming that the custom widget archive was successfully imported. And you can see that it's now listed as a custom widget archive containing a single custom widget. Let's add this custom widget to the view that we created earlier. So first we need to switch back to our new view Head up to the View menu and select it. Now we need to edit the page so that we can add the custom widget to it. Now a custom widget is added in much the same way as all of the default widgets. It's, it will appear in the list of widgets in the Add Widgets dialog. So let's scroll down and find our custom widget. 
There it is at the bottom. So we select the Add button and it gets added to the page. So let's close the dialog. Now you can see that custom widget has been added at the top of our two column T, but I want it to appear in the second column. So let's drag it down to where I want it to be. Now I'd also like to change the name of this widget. So let's open up the widget menu and choose the rename option. I can now enter any name that I wish. So let's just change this to be my custom policy editor and hit done. There we go, the widget's now shown with the new name and I can hit finish to save all those changes to the page. And that was done successfully as confirmed by the message.